Hello friends. So it's time for us to chat and for me to actually like open this vlog because I haven't yet. <laughs> Hello, welcome to Wednesday. <laughs> I've honestly not been doing too much reading. So it's okay to just update now because I was read one book. I've read one volume of manga and I'm about halfway through an audiobook. So let's open this vlog and chat. First up, Izzy, my dear, dear Izzy read me a Bonkers Bananas little tiny erotic short called Ridden by the Uber. <laughs> yeah. It's what you think it is. One star. I'm scarred for life. <laughs> Thank you, May and Izzy, for scarring me. I love you both. Um, but if you want to see all of my live reactions to that, you have to be a member on Izzy's channel because it's a member-exclusive video. Um, it sounds like something she's going to be doing more in the future. So if you're interested in different creators reacting to the bonkers banana pan pantsness of a certain author, Richard or er, Leonard Delaney, um, on Amazon, then go ahead and s sign up to be a member with Izzy. Um, I've been working on lots of content planning because I've got two very busy months coming up at work. So I want to get my list ready and my pre-filming and a certain video is coming back that y'all are going to be excited about. It's probably up by the time this is live. So I will leave it linked in whichever corner it goes in. Um, so yeah, that happened. <laughs> the volume of manga that I read was fantastic. And that was Kakarillo Bed and Breakfast for Spirits, Volume 7. I thoroughly enjoyed the volume. I continue to thoroughly enjoy the series. I'm very excited for Volume 8 in particular because I feel like 7 left off in a great place. So very much looking forward to Volume 8. Okay, the audiobook that I'm in the middle of is Kaleidoscope by Kristen Ashley. Yes, I'm still working through this Colorado Rockies, Colorado Mountains series, whatever it's called. Um, this one is about um, Deck and his old friend who they both were much more like into each other than they realized at the time because he was seeing her friend. And so they just never really let themselves go there or think about it. But with hindsight, they both realized that she saw the writing on the wall between the two of them, felt threatened, and caused problems. Um, things didn't work out with him and that woman, obviously. And um, she really did a number on him. He's been, like, trying to get over her for years. And then he runs into Emmy again, and things start up fast and quick for them. But they have their own problems that they're working through. And it's been really good so far for me. He is very alpha. If you do not like alpha heroes, do not bother with Christian Ashley. It's what she does. I enjoy it. I can handle me an alpha. So, yes, I am enjoying that. Um, I will probably get that finished in the next day or two. Um, I do plan on reading a bunch of manga. I do have some hair I need to go do tomorrow. So I'll most likely get some reading done. Um, but right now it's like 6.30. I need to go downstairs, figure out dinner with the hubs and figure out the rest of the evening. So that's my plan for now. I'm going to log off here. And now that this is officially started, you can see all the B-roll and fun from here. Hey, howdy, hey. <laughs> so I have lots of other things to update you about in this vlog, which is great because I haven't talked about much lately or much at all in this vlog yet. So I have a bunch of volume ones that I've tried recently that I'm going to talk to you about. And then I did finish Kaleidoscope by Kristen Ashley. So I guess we'll start up with that one first. 
So in Kaleidoscope, we have Deck, and Deck is very alpha, as I said in the last clip. But the way that we work through things in this one worked really well for me. Our heroine, Emmy, has PTSD from a trauma from her childhood that she's just continued to bury. She's not been getting into... She never got around to fixing anything. She just repressed it because as a kid, that's what you do. And she was 12 at the time, and she was kidnapped for three days. The man felt enough guilt that he turned himself in, turned her over, and tried to move forward with his life. But um, there are some things going on that still connect this man and Emmy. And the way that it all worked out and worked through felt very realistic for someone who has PTSD and had someone that loved them that tried their best to help them break through. And I blessedly had a partner like Deck who um, broke through. And all of it felt very genuine. A lot of these books have ended on really bad like things happening to our heroine. So that the hero has to kind of like rescue her. Because these are romantic suspense books. But this one went a slightly different route. And that worked really well for me. And a lot of it focused on Emmy getting the care and treatment that she needs for her PTSD. And I cried multiple times at the end of this book, especially in the epilogue. There were two different moments where I was driving and literally fell apart. Like I'm, I'm starting to tear up a little bit just thinking about those. So yes, I thoroughly enjoyed this one. Again, Kristen Ashley writes alphas. If you don't like an alpha, you're not going to like these. I'm just going to say it straight up. So if you can handle an alpha hero, I highly recommend them because there's a lot more going on to these books than just banging in an alpha. So I love them for that. Let's talk about all of the manga that I've read. So first up on the list, I have anti-romance. So in anti-romance, this is a boy's love story in which we have two friends who have been friends for years and they've been living together as roommates for six years. And finally, one of them makes the first move in a romantic direction in this first volume. And it's how things fall out and move forward from there. This one was fine. Um, I do think I'm going to read volume two. I have not, I, like, I wasn't compelled to purchase this one. I just ended up reading it while I was sitting at the bookstore. And so I, I wasn't compelled to bring it into my collection. So I'm going to give it another volume, just kind of sitting at the store and reading it. And then I'll kind of figure out how I feel. But again, I'm trying to be very selective about what I bring into my collection. So like these volume ones that I'm going to talk to you about, I'm going to tell you right now, I did not bring into my collection. So, um, so I did also try Yokozuna Family Volume 1. This is the new thing that they're talking about from Viz. But I was very put off very early on in this volume because we have someone who's acting as a vice principal and has a lot of power flirting with a teenage girl, making her very uncomfortable. I know it was meant to be a play on humor, but it just felt icky to me. And I, I just couldn't move forward at that point. So I did not finish that first volume. So I don't have full thoughts. All I know is I tried it. It looks like I, a kind of yakuza style found family story which in theory i love the concept of but it did not work for me um same thing as i love the concept but it didn't quite work for me was yakuza reincarnation this would have hit a lot different for me except that it's a very old boss of a yakuza who's literally like in his 70s who's reincarnated as a beautiful teenage girl and runs around half naked and i just it just wasn't working for me. I did try it. And again, in theory, the whole concept of someone from the Yakuza being reincarnated was fine for me. I didn't read the back before I jumped in, so I had no idea it was an old man <laughs> who was being reincarnated. Otherwise, I wouldn't have even picked it up. But I did try it. The art style was great. So that's one where your mileage will vary. Go ahead and read it before you purchase it is what I would say. Um, just because I think that, again, there, I can see why people would love it. It's just not my trope. I did try Dan Dan, 
And this one didn't work for me at all. <laughs> like, it was just weird and awkward. The opening page just set the tone all wrong for this series for me. Um, essentially, we have a girl who believes in ghosts and yokai and a boy who believes in UFOs. And neither of them believes in what the other person does. And it's just shenanigans. Again, I didn't necessarily hate it, but I'm not going to continue it. I, I didn't enjoy it enough. And um, I'm not compelled to bring it into my collection. So again, another one where your mileage may vary. It's one that I would recommend reading before purchasing. Because I think a lot more people may not enjoy it. Maybe I'm just weird. I don't know. So one that I didn't bring into my collection. I do plan on reading volume two. Kind of like anti-romance. And that is Black and White. Tough Love at the Office. So this is a Yuri where these two women have to act like prim and proper women at work. And so when they're working together on their own, sexual tensions rise and they have a very aggressive physical relationship. Um, so things get down and dirty very quickly with these two. And again, it's just not quite my trope. It's a little too aggressive for me. Like they are both very aggressive women. I mean, I like an alpha in a story, but neither person was submitting. So you have two very red, very alpha personalities, like, attacking each other physically. And it's only once they're in a sexual position that someone submits. And that just didn't quite sit right with me. So again, that's another one where your mileage may vary. So I'm going to give it another volume. Like, I'm just going to read it at the bookstore kind of a situation and then we'll see how I feel. So I believe we have talked about everything now that I've read since Love in the Night ended. I believe we're completely caught up now. So with that said, I do need to go do some hair this afternoon. Um, I finished Kaleidoscope while I was out um, doing another hair appointment. Um, the current audiobook I'm reading now is the last one in the Colorado Mountain series, and that is Bounty. So we have Deke that we've known on and off. He hangs out at the bar quite a bit. I think he's one of the bouncers at the bar as well, if I remember right, because he's big and broad. And he's back in town in um, Carnal. He met a woman named Justice seven years prior, and it rocked Justice's world. She really like just realized that her life was not enough and her interaction with him at a bar for 10 minutes changed her life in a way and so now she settled down in this small town and um the thing is deke stood her up like they were supposed to meet up the next day and he stood her up and so she's been deeply affected by this she looks different she's in a different style and stuff now but um, he doesn't recognize her, but she immediately recognizes him. And so now he's going to be working on the house that she just bought because it's only like half finished. So it's going to be interesting. And I think it's going to be, I believe he's one of the bounty hunters. Yeah, I think he works. Is it Chase that was the bounty hunter? I don't remember. One of the guys was a bounty hunter and they worked with Deke. So now we're going to get Deke's story. So it's going to be interesting. I'm really excited for what's to come. Um, the second he figures out who she is, it's going to be really interesting. He doesn't seem to have figured that out yet, but she also hasn't said her full name out loud because he made specific comments about her name. And so she's kind of just wanting to not bring that up for him or make him feel weird about it and just wants to move forward. So we'll see how things go. I have a feeling that's going to blow up in their face later. But yeah, so I'm going to go see my friend and do her hair and it's going to be a good time and I'm very, very excited about it. And it's the last little bit of hair I'm going to do before I have my surgery next week. So yeah, I'm having surgery next week. I, I haven't really talked about that here. Um, I have a ganglion cyst on my wrist that's been causing me some problems. And so we're just going to go and get it removed as best we can and move forward from there. So yeah, that's all that's going on there. It's not, it's going to be an outpatient procedure. It's not going to be a major thing where recovery is super long. I'll have a wrap on my hand for about two weeks and yeah, that's kind of all. So, um, you might see some of my recovery in this vlog. I don't know. 
Um, I have a feeling that while I'm recovering, I will do a lot of reading. <laughs> but yeah, lots of fun things going on. Um, I've been trying to get my library all organized so I can start filming my manga collection video, which you guys will see later this year. Um, I'm trying to work on content for the next couple of months, get some pre-filming done so that even when I'm down and out, if I don't feel like filming, you guys have stuff. So that's a lot of what I'm going to be working on, um, when I get back today. So with that said, that is the end of this clip and I will chat with you guys in a while. Good morning, friends. So it is now, hello, I'm right here. There we go. Hi. So it is now Friday. It's like the 21st or 22nd. I'm losing track of days, y'all. Um, let's see. My surgery is on the 26th, and it's five days from now, so the 21st. Um, so I did get some reading done last night. Um, Izzy was hosting the Friends with her members. That's the little clip you saw last night. I was invited to participate. And I have volume six and seven of Vampire Dormitory that I read last night. This series is really great for a lot of reasons, but I really feel like we get a connecting in the couple volume, a shenanigans volume, and then a plot-centered volume. So there's a great balance to the series because we zero in on our couple, focus on their connection, then we kind of get the build up to the plot stuff in fun shenanigan style, and then you get the good plot stuff. So it's this great balance for me. It works really well. I continue to really love and enjoy the series. And so that is a big thing for me, and I really, really enjoy it. So just so y'all know, if you're not reading Vampire Dormitory, I highly recommend it. Um, it is available digitally. It was a digital first title that has been published physically because it's done so well. So with that said, you can collect digitally or physically, whatever makes you happy. But I do recommend collecting the series because it is brilliant. I love it. I think it's so well done. Big love. So other than that, um, I haven't done much reading, honestly. Um, yesterday ended up being um, busier than I initially expected, just kind of overall. Um, with the live sprints last night, that kind of took up a chunk of my evening. By the time that was all finished and I took, like, a good shower and stuff last night, like, I was just ready for bed, so I went to bed. <laughs> so, that's all the reading that I've gotten done. I have made some progress in my current audiobook, which is Bounty by Kristen Ashley. Sorry, I'm relying on natural light and it keeps changing, so I'm sorry in advance. So, yes, I've read more in Bounty. I'm really enjoying it. Um, this is the last book in the Colorado Mountain series. So as soon as I finish this, I'm going to go back to my reread of Mistborn, the second era, because um, I have Shadows of Self and Bands of Mourning to get read before mid-November. So um, I am just about to film a couple of videos before I go to work, which is why I look so good right now. One of those is a video that I think y'all have been waiting to, for me to bring back to my channel, and that is the return of releases on my radar. I'll leave that linked in the corner. And then the other one's just a fun one. Izzy had done one of these, and I'm like, hey, Izzy, are you cool if I do one of these? And she's like, yeah, do it. So I'm going to film those, and then I'm going to go to work, and... <laughs> I will talk to you guys more tonight or tomorrow, probably tomorrow. Hello, friends. So, um, it's Tuesday, the day before my surgery. I've not read much the last little while. Um, I've just been kind of trying to manage my stress and focus on work because my bandwidth has been low. So, book-wise, I've just been listening to my audiobook of Bounty by Kristen Ashley. I've still been really enjoying it. I've got about two hours left in that, so there's a good chance that'll get finished um, probably today as I'm getting some stuff done. But real quick, I have read a couple of volumes of manga, so let's chat about those real quick. So, first up, the Ancient and Makeus Bride Volume 16 is finally out. So, of course, I immediately consumed this. I love this series a whole lot. Um, once this arc is finished, I think what I'm going to do is go back and reread the entire series. So, if you're interested in doing that with me, I mean, it'll probably be about a year, I think, before the arc is done. There's one to two volumes left in this arc, I would think. With the direction it's headed, we kind of are reaching the climax of the story in this volume, but we still have to kind of 
resolve that conflict and then have kind of the wrap up after. So that's why I think there will be two more and that we usually get a volume every six months on this one. So if you're interested in doing like an Ancient Megas Bride read along in 2024, maybe let me know because I would definitely be down to organize that. I have Outbride volume two. I'm going to have a dedicated review done for this by the time you're seeing this video. So I'm going to leave that linked there. I'm going to film it later this afternoon. So yes, this is a thing <laughs> that I read and I have feelings and the things I was initially concerned about, I'm a little less concerned about now, but I have other concerns now. So there will be a dedicated review. You will get all my thoughts in that video. And that's all I'm going to say here. And then I did read the gloriousness that is A Man and His Cat Volume 7. I adored this. There were so many adorable moments and I really loved it all the way through. And then the final panel blew my brain. We learned a piece of information that in seven volumes, we've never heard an inkling of. So I'm very curious as to why. Because this, this is new, nobody, very unexpected. But seeing Joffrey here... And the tiny kittens all around was one of the best parts of this volume because Joffrey is amazing. Um, I really appreciated Joffrey by the end of this volume. Up to that point, you don't know how to feel about him, but I feel like this really lets you fully understand Joffrey and Joffrey's um, family starts to understand them a little bit better. So it's fantastic. I love it always. And yes, always Fukumaru and Mr. Konda give me life. I mean... I, I snapped this couple of panels, <laughs> these Halloween ones, that, like, the second I saw, I, I, like, died. And my husband is like, what are you reading over there? I'm like, a man and his cat. This is just fun. And, yeah. So, there's that. <laughs> just a little taste of what you get in a man and his cat and the cuteness. So, that's it for now. Um... Today's a lot of um, prep for surgery, get the house clean. I do have my interview with Brie from over at In Love and Words. Um, I will leave that interview linked in the corner. And er, I think it's this corner because I think it flips. I don't know. My brain's broken right now. I don't whatever corner. Um, I will leave the interview in the corner. Brie does this for a lot of different um, romance readers. So feel free to go check out the series. She's interviewed some of my very good friends like Steph from Novelty Corner, Izzy from Happy For Now. She's going to be interviewing May from This Past Romance um, and lots of other creators as well. Some I've met some new people that way. Um, she's interviewed Ashley over at Bookish Realm. That was her most recent one. Um, but yes, I'm very, very excited. This is going to be a lot of fun. Um, it's a pretty in-depth interview. So if you want to know me outside of just like normal stuff, like that's that's going to be where you want to do that. Hi. So I've finished a couple things since we last chatted. So let's chat about those real quick. Um, it's the same day. Yes, I've changed. But um, it's for that interview with Brie. Like, that's going to be coming up here shortly, but I did get a couple of things finished before interview time. So with that said, I'm going to tell you what I've read. So I did finish up Bounty by Kristen Ashley, which is the end of the Colorado Mountains series. And I've really enjoyed the series. I've had a great time um, going through and listening to the series. I know not everybody's a fan of the series and they're not um, fans of the audiobooks even necessarily. But I really enjoyed my time. I have to thank Heather from Hia Booktubes for the recommendation. She insisted a bunch of us read The Gamble. And once I did, I was kind of hooked. I mean, I love these small town romances with their big alpha heroes. And I just like them. And some there are some biker elements to this one as well. I know she has a true like biker series. So I think the, that's the next one I'm going to be exploring from her. But I really enjoyed it. This one's a solid four. The conflict was external, which was great. I was really worried it was going to be an internal one for a minute. But with the way it all worked out, um, the external conflict was even further removed from what I thought it would be. So that was a little bit of a stretch for me, but it wasn't too bad. I mean, it was completely conceivable and believable. We'd been given the information that would lead to this previous to this point, but it could have gone several different ways. 
And I'm okay with the direction that the ending went on this one. I really like um, Jess and Deke a lot. I like them together. Um, they're a couple that fought. He fought against it for a long time because he thought she was a certain way. And the longer he realized she wasn't, he's like, I'm an idiot. Why am I doing this? And things go from there. But yeah, that's kind of what happened there. So yeah, I would say it's a solid four for me. Um, it's not my favorite in the series, but it was still a solid entry with characters I really liked. We got to see everybody. We got to see some things happen that I wasn't sure we would see happen. And that was great. I Again, I just really had a great time and enjoyed it. The other thing I read, um, one of my friends popped by. I thought originally she was just coming to borrow some manga, but she wanted to sit and read for a little bit and visit. And so it was fun to catch up with her. And so... Um, while she was here, I read the entirety of Volume 3 of The Abandoned Empress. Now, I'm really liking the direction of this series. Now, when it comes to all three of the potential heroes, I don't know who to root for at this point. And there are reasons for that. They all have other motives behind their connection with our heroine. And it's very interesting. One is obvious because it's the heir to the... Uh, empire and from volume one we know that she is in line to potentially be his fiance the other two this man with the red hair and then the one from the previous volume with the more greenish yellowish hair are also people sh that are interested in courting her we'll say and this one is very politically charged very heavy and very good. I'm really enjoying it. This one is full color, so do know that going in. So you will pay a little more. It's very heavy, very well made, but it is full color and very, you still get that good flop that you need so it doesn't crease on your spine. So yes, really enjoying this series, each volume. And like they have like silver inlay in all of the covers like they've really gone all out for this series and I'm here for it because man I'm really enjoying this a whole lot um I've talked about this series before on the channel um essentially this woman um was abandoned by the emperor at one point to the point where she was murdered <laughs> essentially and when she dies she gets a chance to kind of relive her life and starting back at the age of 10. And so we're kind of seeing how things are developing, but developing differently this time than last time. And um, it's very interesting. I'm, I'm just very curious to see where this is going to go. And it makes me really happy. So the other thing is I had to go get my car worked on. I mentioned that. And while I was there, I took my Kindle which I have these amazing strap, I think they're called strapsicles. Um, Steph over at Novelty Corner um, had a discount code for them and um, they had sponsored one of her videos. So I ended up ordering me a set, I love them. Um, which reminds me, I need to go to the post office because <laughs> a bunch of us did a group order so we got the free shipping just because they are in Australia where Steph lives. And so I just need to send those out because I keep forgetting. Anyways, um, I did start The Demon's Bargain by Katie Robert, which I am enjoying very much so far. It's going to be a wild ride and a good time. And that's always something really fun for me. I always enjoy it. So um, really enjoying it so far. It involves the demon that like comes to check up on the couple in The Dragon's Bride, if you've read it, because it does take place in the same world. And it's just a very... It's a different take than I honestly thought we were going to get um, with it, especially after I'd read Captive Merman's Promise. I'm I'm really excited. It's going to be a good time. Um, it looks like Bree's asking me some questions. We're going to be starting up in about a half hour. So I'm going to take care of that, read a little bit, do the interview. And then um, once I've read some more, I might read some more manga today too. I don't know. We'll see. I have to distract myself. I did get my time for my surgery. It's very early in the morning. I'm not looking forward to being up so early, but I will do that. So anyways, yes. Chat with y'all later.
Hi, friends. So it's been a couple of days since you've seen my face because <laughs> I had my surgery. <laughs> didn't really feel like getting ready. Didn't really feel like filming for a couple of days. I'm back to work today. So today's as good a day as any. I have gotten a little bit of reading done. Not a ton, granted. I've been catching up on other things like watching One Piece with my husband and then re-watching Haikyuu because it's my comfort show. <laughs> just to kind of help me relax and rest and let my body do what it needs to do. But anyways, so let's talk about what I've read. First up, I finished The Demon's Bargain by Katie Robert. Now, when I went into this, I did not realize it was the same demon, Ranmanu, that is in um, The Dragon's Bride. I'm not sure if I said that in my previous clip, but it is. And so I really like getting their story. It's really fantastic, really enjoyed um this one a lot it involves him and a very dark witch there's a powerful amulet of hers that was stolen by a previous lover and so she summons ranmanu to get it back and so that's kind of the whole premise here i'm not going to say too much more it does take place during the shadow market and yeah it was a lot of fun i had a great time i did also read a few volumes of manga yesterday and that is first up she loves to cook and she loves to eat this is so pure. I love this so much. These two women are amazing. The chemistry between them is amazing. I love it so much. I love them. I love everything about this. <laughs> it is just, it's starting out as a beautiful female friendship. And I do think it is going to go into a romantic relationship between the two of them, just from the direction it's feeling. And there's some blushing and things happening between the two of them. That's why I think it will go romantic. But it's starting off as a beautiful female friendship. There's one where there's a chapter in here where our more femininely dressed character here is on her period and miserable about it. But our other female um, <coughs> notices something is up and asks if everything's okay. And she says, well, I'm just on my period. I'm out of supplies, blah, 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 blah. And she goes and gets everything for her and takes care of her that way, asks her what food she's craving and helps her make it. It's so sweet. And just like the healthy talk about period health as well, because she has very painful cramps and she's like, well, that's not normal. You should go see a doctor and all those kinds of things. Like they just had a very healthy conversation about it all. Like I love everything about this. I was like fangirling the whole time I was reading this because I need more people to read it because it's brilliant. This is volume one. There's at least three volumes out and it's ongoing in Japan. So this one's going to be a long one, but I'm very, very excited and would recommend picking it up. Next, I read Play It Cool Guys volume four. This was a really fun installment in the series. Um, these cool guys, <laughs> um, they're all clumsy and forgetful and things like that and they just brush it off and they're adorable and I love it and this particular volume did a lot for this character actually like building their story arc and like helping them figure out where they want to go in life and I think that was really nice because it wasn't just focus focused on the clumsy things it actually focused on a plot point we did get a little bit of that in volume three but I feel like it amplified a little bit for this character here and I really enjoyed how that played out um I'm really looking forward to the next volume as well I don't know if there's going to be more beyond volume five I haven't done any research on that yet but I have done that much at least <laughs> that there will be a volume five <laughs> And I just enjoy each installment in the series. It's a good time. These ones are full color, so you are going to pay a bit more for them. They are a bit thinner, but I promise the money is worth it because I really enjoy them. And then last but not least of what I've read is the final volume of Cat Massage Therapy. I did some research. This is the final volume. The series is complete. And this is the end. And... I really just loved this installment in the series. Each installment has been adorable. There has always been raised toe beans. So if you love that aesthetic of it, you can definitely rub any volume you like and you'll feel the toe beans. And um, this series was just adorable and cute. It was cat shenanigans, people getting massaged by cats, all the crazy things that happen when a cat's around. I loved it. It's absolutely amazing and just really sweet. So if you're looking for a short, cute cat manga, cat massage therapy is definitely where it's at. 
Um, and I just had a great time with this one. Again, another one that's full color, so you do pay a bit more for it. This one is also a little bit thicker than the previous volumes, so this one um, did really well for me, and yeah, I really love the series. Would definitely recommend it. All right, so that's it for now. Um, I do work today and tomorrow. <laughs> I work a close and then an open, so we'll see how things go. I am very excited to get back to work. Um, though it's been nice to relax for a couple days like that, I just, I'm starting to feel like a bump on a log and like I don't have a lot of value right now. <laughs> so I think getting back to work right away is going to be the best thing for me. Um, I promise I'm not going to push myself too hard. Everything's going to be fine. And yeah, so you're going to see this in some videos coming up. So just be prepared for that. And I do hope to get some editing done this weekend because there's another video I want to get out before this one, but I need to get that edited first. I might have to do it on my laptop so I have a trackpad instead of a mouse because holding a mouse is kind of hard right now. So anyways, I rambled enough. I'll see you guys in the next clip. Hello, friends. So today is officially November 1st. So it's time for me to wrap up this vlog for you. So I've only read one more thing since we last chatted, and that is The Kraken Sacrifice by Katie Robert. Um, I ended up really enjoying the, the Kraken Sacrifice. I felt like it was a very unique book for me to read. This is my first tentacle monster romance. Um, and I really enjoyed my time with it. I think the way that the relationship developed was very different from The Dragon's Bride, and I appreciated that it was different. And I appreciated that it took some more time and that they were just very different books. And I really just had a good time with it. I think the heroine was very relatable um, in a sense that... She was just very, very lonely, and that led her to behave certain ways. And once our hero understands that, and understands that he's just been um, making her feel worse without intentionally doing so, he really shapes up. There's a pretty good grovel situation going on there, and he works his way back into her good graces, and I think it was really well done. So with that said, that's all that I have for this vlog. I know it's shorter than some of the other ones have been, but I also wasn't reading as much. I was doing a lot of comfort TV watching and just healing in this vlog. So um, I'm excited to start the next installment. That'll be 30 and 30 and some nonfiction and some arcs. It's going to be a great time. So... Thanks again for watching. If you're here just because you love me, leave me some sort of um, Thanksgiving-related emoji, a turkey, a cornucopia, whatever you feel inspired by, and I will see you guys in the next one. Bye. Was it all just a dream, just all in my head?